Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm really excited to try and do a run with Onyx because I don't know quite how it will go. In some ways it might be similar to Geodude considering it is a ground rock Pokemon and will face similar problems. However, in exchange for a lot of attack, Onyx is substantially faster and even a little better at defense. I'm pretty curious because if we look at Onyx's moveset, it has a pretty decent moveset, not necessarily deep, but really good moves, and it has decent speed. Could Onyx actually be a Pokemon that ends up as a pleasant surprise? Only one way to find out. First things first though, Onyx's early move pool isn't going to be great for Brock, and that's unfortunate. But it will be pretty good against the bug catchers, and I've mentioned this before, but against Pokemon like Onyx, Poison Sting actually will do zero damage, meaning the game will just say it missed. This is due to, I don't know if a bug or more of an oversight. When a move is just not very effective, it'll always do one damage, but unfortunately, they didn't think about what would happen if it's double not very effective, and it just rounds down to zero sometimes, which means the game says it missed. Not something that happens in later Pokemon, but kind of funny. Speaking of funny, you know what's hilarious? Over 50% of you aren't subscribed. No, <laughs> I can't even get through that. Listen, guys, I've been on the platform for a while. I know how annoying it is when YouTubers beg for likes and subs, but let me tell you, it works. I have way less likes and subs than other YouTubers my size. So if you want to help out, do that. If not, whatever. Let's get back to the video. That's why you're here. And I'm going to try to battle Brock at just level 8. It's probably not going to go very well, but let's see why. Onyx does start with Screech, so I'm going to use that three times, and Geodude doesn't use Defense Curl. Now I need to see how much I do, and it's nothing. So I'm going to need to level up. It's not horrible. I'm probably doing like three or four damage, unless I get a crit, which unfortunately, with Onyx's base 70 speed, happens about 13% of the time. In spite of that, you can tell we're going to make it past Geodude. We might not have a lot of health, but Geodude is only doing one damage every time it uses Tackle, so eventually we are going to knock it out. However, then we have to battle Brock's Onyx, and even after three Screech, we actually have to wait a little bit because we don't want to be hit by Bide, it's only doing, what would you say, two, three damage, maybe less? Whatever it is, it's simply not enough. Because Brock's Onyx outspeeds, it outspeeds with Bide, and then I get hit with 4 damage, meaning Tackle is doing 2. It can still use Tackle, and although I got it to almost half HP, that's not nearly good enough. I try to battle Brock again after having defeated the Junior Trainer, and we are doing a little bit more damage to Geodude, even though it's a little annoying to get all 3 Screech up because it keeps going for Defense Curl. But I promise you, we are going to be doing more damage. You actually really notice how much more we do once we get a crit and we only do like one damage. But we can speed past this part because the real obstacle is Onyx. After setting up Screech three times and Screech only has 85% accuracy, I do get two critical hits in a row, which is pretty bad. But kind of luckily for our purposes, Brock goes for Bide before I get my first non-critical hit. Meaning, once Bite actually hits me and does 4 damage, we can see I'm still doing 2 damage, despite the fact I'm a level higher. As you'd expect, since we do about the same damage to Onyx, we do about just as well as we did last time, which is just over half HP remaining. There's only one other trainer I can battle, Rival 1A, and he's pretty easy, thankfully. Not too much experience points gained, and I know I could just battle some of the bugs in Viridian Forest, but Onyx's attack isn't super high, so it actually takes several hits to knock out the Metapod or Kakuna, which is usually the quickest way to gain experience points. But if we can't beat Brock here, that might be what we need to do. So I'm going to start off by using Screech, not once, not twice, but eventually five times, because Brock set up a defense curl and Screech does miss one time. I'm not sure if Tackle is doing much more than it was last time, and Brock is going to start setting up defense curls. Eventually, I can use Screech if he sets up too many, but I'm still doing pretty decent damage. I don't really see the need to set up another Screech, and I make it to the Onyx at 23 HP. Onyx goes for Bide right away, so I'm easily able to set up all three Screech. Unfortunately, 
The Onyx is still outspeeding me, and it's pretty apparent to me I don't seem to be doing any more damage than I was last time. I am doing a little bit better, but that's because Onyx is using moves like Screech and Tackle. Brock's Onyx is doing about 2 HP of damage to me, so I have a pretty good idea that's how much I'm doing to Brock. It's better Brock does that than use Bide, because if I don't predict correctly, and let's face it, I'm just going to keep using Tackle, it's going to do 4 damage instead of 2, so that's not very good. I do get lucky, however, with a couple clutch misses when Brock uses Bide. Only a 5% chance I miss, and on the exact turn I need it, that's crazy. But wait, in case you thought that was crazy that it happens not once but twice, the next time Brock uses Bide, I get a critical hit, which is clearly only doing 1 damage because once I get hit with Bide, I only take 2 damage back. So, a very lucky fight. But after being hit by that tackle, I'm only at 3 HP. And all I can do is just keep going for tackle and pray Onyx does not go for Bide. If it does and I don't miss or get a crit, I lose. Additionally, once Onyx goes for tackle, we'll have 1 HP remaining. All I can do is go for tackle myself. It goes for Screech. I keep going for tackle and here's Bide. I need a 3 turn. It can be 2 or 3 turns and I win. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh my. The luck in this battle was beyond belief. Two tackle misses when Brock uses Bide in a row, and then I got a critical hit without all of that happening. I would not have been able to win, and yet somehow all of that happened. Pretty crazy. That saved me probably about five in-game minutes from having to level up again. Maybe less. It's hard to know. But regardless, I'm not going to reset. Brock is a pretty irritating battle in a lot of these runs because most Pokemon only know normal moves when they start off, and there's really not much I can do in terms of strategy in the early game. So once you get a victory, you take that, and you make your way through Mount Moon to Cerulean City. Well, at least I'm going to do that. Now this might shock you, but battling Misty with an Onix at this level is not going to go well for me, so the only option is to battle Rival 2. He leads with Pidgeotto, and unfortunately, we don't seem to outspeed. We do, however, have a move that is unbelievably cheap, and that move is Bind. So the way Bind works is that once it hits, the other Pokemon cannot attack until it is finished. And in theory, can help you sweep through the entire game, assuming two things. One, you outspeed, which we don't, and two, you don't miss, and there's a 15% chance of you missing which is why I don't like using Bind. It also is very low base power, so it's an extremely slow move. We are going to use it to knock out Pidgeotto, but notice it was able to use Sand Attack, and this will be a huge problem because we're just going to miss over and over and over again. Not a big deal versus Abra, but even Rattata being a normal Pokemon, if it's able to use Tail Whip and then Hyper Fang, it can start doing some serious damage. I'm only at 10 HP headed to Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur does just attack randomly, but I'm not able to hit a single bind until I'm at 4 HP. By this point, Bulbasaur finally does use Vine Whip, and I lose. In the second battle, I realize something kind of interesting. After I go for Screech, I do outspeed with Bind, meaning this is a speed tie and it's a 50-50 chance as to who goes first. Setting up the Screech is pretty good because each hit of Bind is now doing more damage. And I don't mind if Pidgeotto goes for Quick Attack, because then it's not going for Sand Attack. That's the only thing I don't want to see. Making it through with only 6 HP lost, with all my accuracy, I think we're going to win. However, I start to think maybe I wasn't paying attention, because we missed not once, not twice, but three times with Tackle. Again, only 5% chance you miss with Tackle. I don't know why I'm missing so much. But it's clear I wasn't hit with Sand Attack, we just got incredibly unlucky somehow. Doesn't really matter because Abra can't attack. Against Rattata, I opt to go for Screech and Bind. Unfortunately, as you're going to see, Bind is not super reliable. I don't get hit too much by Rattata, but Bind can miss. And if that's a Pokemon with a Water or Grass move, we can lose. And we have a Pokemon with a Grass move right here. Nonetheless, it's a 1 in 4 chance it uses Vine Whip. I'm going to go for Screech. Bulbasaur goes for Tackle. 
I go for bind, and it lasts three turns. We're going to go again. We hit. Only two turns this time. Another bind. We crit, which means every hit is going to be a crit, and I think it'll do less because of my screech. And we almost knock it out. I'm going to go for tackle, and we are able to make it past rival two. Not too much of a problem. I mean, how can you not like and subscribe for jokes of this level? Nowhere on the internet do you get humor like this. Maybe for good reason. Anyway, normally I would just start talking about Misty, but there's another trainer I'm pretty nervous about. This lass has two Oddish and a Pidgey. Now, we could just go for Bind and hope we get good luck, but what's the fun in that? Could we win without Bind? We do have Rock Throw, but in Generation 1, it's 65% accurate. Absorb also is doing over half my health, so unless Rock Throw crits or one-shots without a crit, it doesn't look like this is a viable strategy. After a couple battles, I'm finally able to hit with Rock Throw, and it's doing over half. Oddish goes for Absorb, but I think I'll still knock it out. And I do! So, if I just... Well, I miss, unfortunately. Maybe I should have gone for Bind here. Thankfully, we do knock out Pidgey, but I have 25 HP. I think that's the minimum I've seen Absorb do. But theoretically, if we just a little bit more health, we could do the exact same thing again, and we could beat the last without Bind. Well, it took me a lot of attempts, because the odds aren't good. I also realized Screech has 85 accuracy, so we should go for Screech, then Rock Throw, and it'll one-shot. I can miss a few times against Pidgey, but I do hit the first time. And then we try for another Screech, and we survive on 4 HP, another Rock Throw. Very, very good. Took me about 5 minutes, and it required battling quite a few more trainers. And in case you're upset, oh, j -Rose, you wasted time, just use Bind. Trust me, we have Misty to defeat. I'm going to need all the levels I can get. But there's something else you might find interesting. This strategy might actually have been more consistent than just using Bind. Just doing some basic probability calculations, the strategy I just did had about a 30% chance of working, actually closer to 31%. If we get decent bind luck, that would have been about 38%. However, if we got pretty bad bind luck and needed to use bind 8 times, 4 per Pokemon, which without leveling up was a pretty likely scenario, that was only about 27% likely. So. It may have been that the rock throw strategy was better, but like I said, we have to level up because it's time to try and battle Misty. I'm going to battle the Team Rocket member first because after we defeat him, we will get the TM for Dig. And Generation 1 is base 100 power, one of the best offensive moves in the entire game. Same type. Let's try and defeat Misty. So, she leads off with Staryu, we go for Dig, unfortunately our sprite stays visible, I like in Gold and Silver where it disappears, and we are able to knock out Staryu, that's not what I was worried about. Far more concerning is Starmie, it thankfully goes for X Defend, and if I get a critical hit we're gonna win, I don't get it. And, Starmie just goes for Water Gun, yeah, that's gonna knock me out in one hit, we're gonna need to outspeed Starmie at the very least and probably come close to one-shotting if we're going to try and win. There are plenty of trainers available in the SSN, so let's go battle them, including Rival 3. So he still leads with Pidgeotto. We're going to want to hit with Rock Throw. We miss. It goes for Sand Attack, and so we're just going to try again. That's what it's like trying to rely on a move less accurate than Thunder. This time around, we do hit with Rock Throw, and uh-oh... We don't knock out Pidgeotto, and uh-oh, thankfully it misses, but Sand Attack. You'll notice we have Top Body Slam, a staple, and we knock out Pidgeotto. Raticate, we can use the far more powerful Dig. Don't forget, Rock Throw's only 50 base power. It's not a very good move at all. We knock out Raticate in one hit. Kadabra, thankfully we outspeed. We will knock it out with Dig, but now it comes down to Ivysaur. We're going to set up Dig. It misses with Leech Seed. That's what we want to see. No. Ugh. So I think we can level up a little bit. We're going to battle a couple trainers in the SSN. Still worried about Misty anyway, because I think one more level we should be able to one-shot Ivysaur. Let's find out. So first things first, we want to one-shot Pidgeotto. Critical hit, probably we would have. Let's just say we would have. We'll knock out Raticate, one-shot with Dig. Body Slam will one-shot Kadabra, 
And, oh. Well, we got Leech Seed, so that's kind of nice, but that did way less than I thought it would. We win, but that's not looking good for Misty. And that's the next mandatory trainer after we get the HM for Cut. Unfortunately, without beating Misty, you can't use Cut outside of battle, which we need to access Surge's gym. So let's hope we can beat Misty at our current level. Alrighty, so we're going to go for Dig Against Staryu. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's a pretty bad sign because I was hoping Water Gun with Star Me would in one shot. And if Star Yu's Water Gun does that much damage, Star Me is going to one shot. All right, this time at least it doesn't go for X defense. We've made it to Star Me. Please outspeed. No. And like I said, it's going to one shot. Uh-oh. All right, I do have three rare candies. I'm not actually going to save this battle, but I just want to see if I can outspeed at level 30. And I do, but I don't survive Water Gun, albeit it was a crit. So I think the strat has to be to level up a little bit more. I'm going to use one rare candy and try at level 28 to see if just one level is needed or if I should just battle every trainer on Route 11. And as you can see, Starmie is outspeeding me with Bubble Beam. So let's just battle a whole bunch of trainers. This is a good time as any to point out or to remind you that these runs are first attempts. I think it is way more fun to kind of go in without too much of an idea how these things are going to go. Obviously, if I were to do this run again, I would have battled more trainers in the SSN and had done this before I warped back to Cerulean. I overestimated both Onyx's speed and the power of Dig, but it's not a massive time loss. And hopefully after I finish battling all these trainers, I will be able to defeat Misty. So funny enough, we're at level 30. You've already actually seen a battle, but this time we still have our rare candies. We're going to one-shot Staryu. We're going to go for Dig and Bubble Beam. I think I might survive Water Gun from Starmie. So I think that's what we have to hope for is Water Gun from Starmie or X Defend Critical Hit. Let's just knock out Staryu again. And now, please, something good. Critical Hit. We'll take it. I'm fairly sure I could have survived a Water Gun, but if not, I did have Rare Candy just in case. Definitely not a very good start to the run for Onyx. But hopefully, as we proceed to what I consider the second quarter of the game, Onyx starts to get a little bit better. Because we were at so high a level, we cruised through Rock Tunnel, and we make it to Giovanni, who was also very easy. Dig is able to absolutely obliterate both Giovanni's Onyx and Rhyhorn. And although Kangaskhan is a 3-hit KO, at the very least, it can't do very much to me. And we can warp back to Cell... Aw, oh, no! I accidentally healed in Lavender and then forgot to in Celadon. And we cannot use the HM for Fly because we haven't defeated Surge yet. So even though I wanted to go do some shopping, we're actually going to go and battle Rival 4. Now, ideally, we would have Rock Slide here, but we have to use Rock Throw. Thankfully, we hit and one-shot Pidgeotto. We don't one-shot Gyarados, but it doesn't know Hydro Pump yet, and... The rival goes for a retroactive potion, meaning it saw what I was going to do and then potioned after, which it shouldn't do. We knock it out. Against Growlithe, I miss a few times, but that's not a big deal. We still outspeed Kadabra. And do we one-shot Ivysaur with Dig? We kind of do? I don't know. We got a crit, but we won. So that's pretty good. Now, as you guys know, I always try to give my rival the strongest starter against my team. And I've gone back and forth, but I do think that Ivysaur is tougher because Gyarados knows Hydro Pump and that one-shots. Which I think makes up for the fact that Blastoise has far better moves and defense versus Venusaur. So, it is always a question. I can say with certainty that if this were Generation 3 and Gyarados has Intimidate, by far Venusaur is the worst starter for Onix. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. We're talking about Generation 3. We still don't even have three gym badges. But don't worry, we can change that very quickly by battling the Bruno of gym leaders, Surge. Because we're at such high level, I don't even need to use Dig, which is a two-turn attack. Instead, I can go for Body Slam and knock out Voltorb, as well as Pikachu. Raichu's not a one at KO, but what's it going to do to me? Very, very easy battle here. And speaking of easy battles, Koga 
who I don't believe has ever been the battle immediately following Surge, so that's a new thing for the series, I think is going to be an absolute joke. Obviously, I'm going to go for Dig Against Coughing number one. We knock it out. That's one, and we level up. I don't think we're going to one-shot Muck. We don't, but it doesn't even bother attacking. We can knock it out here. Coughing number two is identical to the first one, so we know how that's going to go. And Weezing Self-Destruct, even if he uses that, it won't matter because I'll be underground. It doesn't go for it. Obviously, we're not going to one-shot, but it doesn't really matter. Weezing also doesn't attack. Like I said, not much Koga could have done. Very, very easy victory. And I'm hoping Rival Fievel will also be easy. However, I very much doubt it. We do outlevel his first Pokemon Pidgeot, and there's not much it can do to me. I miss with Rock Slide, and it's clear I outspeed because it didn't go for Quick Attack, but it does go for Sand Attack, so that's really annoying. It would be a lot better if we could one-shot this Pidgeot so we wouldn't have to worry about Sand Attack, but I'm just going to try again. Since I know it's a 2KO, I just go for Body Slam. It can't paralyze. It goes for Wing Attack. And I knock it out with Rock Slide. And now out comes Gyarados. I go for Rock Slide. It doesn't knock it out. And there's... Oh, it misses. But yes, Hydro Pump is why Gyarados is on this team. We're pretty lucky we got the 20% chance it misses. So we do knock it out. But in no way are we in the clear. Growlithe we can easily one-shot with Rock Slide. But now out comes Alakazam. Do we outspeed? No. And it does a lot of damage with Confusion. I'm not surprised that we are going to one-shot. I wasn't actually sure. But I don't think we're going to one-shot Venusaur. I mean, I think it still knows Leech Seed. I'm going to go for Dig. And we don't even do half. It goes for Vine Whip. All right. We got to rethink this. There is another strategy I can use, but I need to level up just a little bit more. There are plenty of trainers in Sylph Company that I can battle. And once you beat Giovanni 2, they all disappear. So might as well level up a little bit. If we have to use rare candies, I'm okay to do that as well, but we might not need to with the strategy I'm thinking of. Before I do that though, I want to do the same thing I did last time, but three levels higher. I go for Rock Slide. We still don't one-shot Pidgeot. That's not great. It doesn't go for Sand Attack, so that's good, but we need to one-shot Gyarados, and I doubt we're going to. It's bulkier than Pidgeot, and yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what I was expecting. Maybe a crit? Hydro Pump doesn't miss, but don't worry because I have another trick up my sleeve. Even though Pidgeot is Sand Attack, I'm gonna go and use the move Harden six times. Why? There's a detailed answer in the description, but essentially, in Generation 1, when you change your stats, all the stats you have badge boosts for, which in this case includes attack, get an additional 12.5% boost, which will help me one-shot Gyarados. Obviously, this is risky because there's a one in four chance Pidgeot uses Sand Attack, but it doesn't here, and I think we're good. We're obviously going to one-shot Pidgeot with Rock Slide. We're also easily going to one-shot Gyarados with Rock Slide. Next is Growlithe, and you guessed it, we're going to one-shot with Rock Slide. And it wasn't just our attack that got raised since we defeated Koga. We outspeed Alakazam and one-shot with Body Slam, and we lost. That sucks. So there's one thing about this badge boost glitch that's important. It goes away once you level up, which we just did. So while we will do more damage against Venusaur than last time, I mean, we're doing about half, it goes for Razor Leaf and easily one-shots. I think it's an automatic crit anyway. And that really sucks. We need to make sure we do not level up in the middle of this battle. The easiest way to do that is to level up, but how much do we need to? I'm just going to use one rare candy and see that's enough. Because as the battle gets underway, it's not only an issue of leveling up in the middle of battle, but how much damage would we have done, and would we have knocked it out with a 6 badge boosted dig? Thankfully, just like last time, Pidgeot does not use Sand Attack, and we knock it out. We don't miss against Gyarados, we knock it out, and now everything is trivial until we get to Venusaur. So I'm gonna go for dig. Moment of truth? No! Alright, we have to- oh, okay. I mean, that was good. I don't know if Vine Whip would have one-shot at full health. Razor Leaf definitely would have. Unfortunately, we don't have any badge boosts in special. So Vine Whip would have been close, but I'm going to be honest, this is good enough for me. In fact, Dig may have even been arranged to one shot. So yeah, I'm just going to move on. And now I've got to think about which gym leader I want to battle next. 
Blaine seems like the more obvious choice, but I actually think we will one-shot every one of Sabrina's Pokemon as long as we outspeed. And you know what? Curiosity is getting the better of me. Let's go battle Sabrina. So we do outspeed Kadabra. That's pretty good. And we one-shot with Earthquake, which you get from Sylph Company. Now I'm going to set up Harden against Mr. Mime. It goes for Barrier, which is really annoying because Earthquake won't one-shot. Light Screen is fine. It only has Confusion, so I'm not super worried, and I think we just won. Venomoth is weak to Rock Slide, so we can easily one-shot. And we outspeed. We knock out Alakazam. Pretty darn easy. Badge Boosts only increase your stats by 12.5%, so there's a chance we actually just outsped Alakazam outright. Who cares? So we could go battle Blaine, but I forgot to go give the Gold Teeth to the Warden, and there is a rare candy there, so let's fly to Fuchsia, and let's go do the gold teeth, and... Wait, what's going on? Oh my, I forgot Erica. I mean, let's be clear, there's a good reason why we didn't battle her when we're quote-unquote supposed to, but probably when I was trying to level up to beat rival Fievel, battling her wouldn't have been the worst idea. It's all good. I mean, at this point, she should be a complete joke, right? Like... We don't need to save or anything. We're just going to use Earthquake and win, right? So our first Pokemon's Victory Bell. I go for Earthquake. I knock it out. Tangle, I go for Rock Slide. I don't knock it out. But then I can knock it out with Earthquake. And Vileplume, I... What? What? No. <laughs> I don't think I've saved before. No, I have to battle Sabrina again. I could use this opportunity to check whether or not I outsped Alakazam outright, but I'm going to be honest, I'm really annoyed at myself right now. Actually, I'm annoyed that Onyx can't one-shot a Vileplume almost half its level, but I'm also annoyed I really thought I didn't need to save. And furthermore, I didn't actually need to battle Erica right then. I could have gone to Cinnabar and battled Blaine like I was talking about, who will likely be a joke. So, outspeed in one shot, Growlithe with Earthquake. Outspeed in one shot, Ponyta with Earthquake. Outspeed in knockout, Rapidash with Earthquake. And outspeed, but don't one shot our canine with Earthquake. Thankfully, it goes for takedown. Don't think Fire Blast could have knocked me out, although it could have burned me. Whatever. That was just as easy as I thought it would be. Although, since I didn't battle any of the trainers in his gym, I didn't actually gain any levels from battling Blaine. It's not until I defeat the beauty in Erica's gym that I get to level 48, but I'm going to be honest, I don't think this really matters all that much. There are a lot of things I could have done differently in order to win. But just in case, I'm going to save before I battle her. Alright, so I'm going to use Earthquake against Victory Bell. We knock it out. That's good. Maybe we'll one-shot Tangela. We don't. I could go for Harden here, and then we'd for sure knock out Vileplum, but I want to see if we can do without it. Alright, moment of truth. Yay! We knock out a Pokemon almost half my level with one move! Let's go! I don't know. That, that was really annoying, I'm not gonna lie. And it's not often Erica is the 7th gym leader I defeat. And it's hilarious that the 8th gym leader, Giovanni, should be substantially easier than she was. So against Rhyhorn, we're gonna set up a couple Hardens. I don't think we need much more than that. In fact, I don't think we need any, but I do want to outspeed Dugtrio. We're going to use Earthquake and knock out Rhyhorn. We outsped. All right, GG. We knock out Dugtrio. Oh my goodness, we knock out Nidoqueen. Holy mackerel. And Nidoking too. Who would have expected that? But we do level up, so I don't think we're going to one-shot Rhydon. We don't, but that's okay, because it can't really do anything to us. And we win. I'm going to be honest, this has been one of the most bizarre runs we've had to this point. Gym leaders like Erica that are normally very easy were actually tricky. And Sabrina, who often gives me a bit of a hard time, was an absolute joke. And to be honest, that's exactly what I like about this challenge. You never quite know how a run is going to go. At least until you get to this point. Because typically, most Pokemon struggle here. Rival 6, Elite 4, Champion usually are very tough for Pokemon like Onyx. I'm not really anticipating this being a huge exception, but hey, to this point, this run has defied all my expectations. So who knows, maybe Rival 6 is going to be a joke somehow. 
Well, good news. Pidgeot no longer can use Sand Attack. So it's just going to keep spamming agility because all its other moves are considered not very effective against me. So I can safely set up all six Hardens and knock out Pidgeot, eventually, with a Rock Slide. Next Pokemon is Rhyhorn, the new addition to the team. We're going to use Earthquake and oh no. So we level up, meaning those Hardens aren't going to do me much good. And that means we're probably not going to one-shot Gyarados. We don't. And we... Oh, well, we're now two for three on Hydro Pump missing, so that's pretty good. But I don't think it's going to matter too much after we knock out Gyarados. We don't really need to worry about Growlithe, but Alakazam is definitely going to outspeed me and... Oh, almost knocked me out. Thankfully, we're going to... Oh my gosh, we don't one-shot Alakazam! We're not even going to make it to... Oh, well, used Reflect. So we are going to make it to Venusaur, but... Yeah, we're not going to be able to win the battle like this. And Venusaur, unless we get a crit, is going to win. So let's just see how much damage we do. Well, looks like that crit wouldn't have worked anyway. There's no way we're going to win this battle without badge boosting. So let's go battle a couple more trainers to ensure we don't level up in the middle. Actually, you know what? Before I waste my time doing that, let's use a rare candy and see if the one level would actually matter. I have a feeling it's going to be more than just badge boosts. We did nothing to Venusaur. So we knock out Pidgeot. We knock out Rhyhorn. We knock out Gyarados. The crit doesn't matter. We knock out Growlithe. We outspeed and one-shot Alakazam. And uh-oh, we still level up. I didn't actually battle trainers. This isn't a matter of me gaining a little too much experience points. We used a rare candy, so we're going to need to be at a higher level to do this. All right, since I only have 2,000 experience points I need to gain, and yes, if I had found that out earlier, I could have battled someone in Giovanni's gym, let's go to the fighting dojo and just battle a couple trainers, and then, for good measure, might as well use rare candies here, because it's either using them here or using them before we battle Laurely. So it should be fine to use them here, and it should ensure this battle is easy and consistent. Now, I may have gone a little overboard here, but I'm going to mimic agility, and that will give me not only the three badge boosts from using agility, but the additional six I get from Harden for a total of nine badge boosts. And I'm going to tell you right now, level 58, there is no way unless I miss an attack, I'm going to lose. The only other thing that could happen is critting against Venusaur, which doesn't happen. <laughs> hey, I promised an easy and consistent battle, and you can't say I didn't deliver there. But it's kind of hard to celebrate this victory when I know that the next trainer could be insanely difficult. While technically Laura Lee is an Ice type Elite Four member, in reality she uses water Pokemon. Three of them know water moves and it's not like Ice moves are super great against me either because my special is so bad. We have to hope Rock Slide does a ton of damage, especially to Dugong, because if not, this is going to be really bad. Alright, so I'm going to set up Harden because why the heck not? Dugong's going to go for Aurora Beam, which... Oh my! Can you imagine this was yellow and it knew Ice Beam? That almost one-shot with the badge boost. Alright, please one-shot. Please, no! At least it put it in range to heal, but... That's... This is bad, guys. If that's how much it did to Dugong, and oh great, we missed. I can't even see how much it's going to do to Cloyster, which is where I was going with that. Thanks, 10% miss chance. Yeah, I think we need to level up like a lot, but before we do, I want to see how much Rock Slide does without Harden. I mean, looks like about the same, so it means I got a low roll, but notice Aurora Beam one shots. All right, last time I want to make it to Cloyster. So I actually have to use Harden or I won't survive the Aurora Beam. We also need Laurelie to heal here. So I'm going to go for Rock Slide. Crit works. Fine. I just want to know how little I do to Cloyster. One of the best defensive Pokemon in the game. I don't even know. I mean, that's not good. That's not good enough. Half seems okay because you think, oh, if I got a critical hit. But a critical hit ignores badge boosts. So I'd need it to do like two thirds at least to guarantee a knockout for a critical hit. Yeah, guys, we need to level up. This isn't even close. And in case you needed more evidence, I decided to teach Fissure to see how much damage I would do against Slowbro. 
It's 30% accurate in these games, and of course I missed turn 1. But don't worry, Dugong also misses thanks to a 1 in 256 chance. Generation 1 is the best. Anyway, Fissure will hit next turn and knock out Dugong. And as you could expect, we also knock out Cloyster. There is a 9% chance that we hit with consecutive Fissures. And the whole point of this was to see how much I would do against Slowbro. I go for Earthquake and I don't even do half. So if I did Harden, maybe it would be a 2 hit KO. I'm going to see if I can knock it out because it'll either go for Withdraw or Water Gun. And if I can make it all the way to Lapras, that would be nice. But unfortunately, it goes for Water Gun and it knocks me out. By the way, opponents don't get badge boosts. That's just how much Water Gun does against me. Wonderful. So there's no choice. We need to level up a lot. There are still plenty of trainers for me to battle, such as the trainers in Victory Road. I can also get the rare candy in the power plant. So after battling a whole bunch of them, I'm at level 63. So we know we have to set up Harden. Aurora Beam still is doing quite a lot of damage. And Rock Slide still doesn't knock it out, but this time Dugong goes for rest. I don't know whether that's something I can count on or not, but I can set up a couple more Hardens. And with those badge boosts, I can knock out Dugong in one hit. Will I be able to one hit KO Cloyster though? It might be close. I'm going to use Rock Slide. Ah, uh, not that close. I mean, a couple more, we would have knocked it out. But I don't even know how I got Dugong to use Rest. Because it should always prefer Aurora Beam since it's super effective. Regardless, we clearly didn't level up enough. So it's time to battle some more trainers. All right, now I'm at level 67, so we're going to set up a Harden, and okay, that's better. And we one-shot Dugong, that's really good. But that's not really all that good because, yeah, we're not going to do that much to Cloyster, and it's just going to knock us out. Clamp has a pretty good chance to miss, but is that what we have to rely on? Starting to run out of trainers, but I'm at level 70, so let's try this again. Going to go for Harden. Roar Beam's just doing about half, so I can go for a second Harden, and it went for Rest. I'm not going to get greedy. I'm just going to go for Rock Slide and knock it out. And now I just need to knock out Cloyster. Come on. Yeah, no! Oh, my God. Oh! Clamp missed. All right. A lot of emotions in a very short period of time there. But we're actually going to make it to Slowbro. Just the second time, the first time without relying on a 1 KO move. I'm not going to play around. I'm just going to go for Earthquake. It goes for Withdraw. I'm going to go for Earthquake again and knock it out. I could have mimicked Amnesia and tried that, but I don't think it's worth it. Now, Jinx is just a matter of not missing. We don't. We one-shot. Jinx's defense is terrible, and I don't know if we'll one-shot Lapras, though. Lapras is pretty bulky, but we go for Rock Slide. It just survives one more badge boost. That doesn't suck. Retroactive Super Potion. Let's go. Okay, I don't know how the rest of the lead four will go, but I know I've made it past Laura Lee for the first time. Thinking about it, I actually don't know how difficult the rest of the lead four are going to be. I mean, the next trainer is Bruno, and we're super effective against at least two of his Pokemon, and the only thing I'm worried about is submission from a champ. Regardless, we're just going to go for Earthquake and knock out the Onix. I don't know if Hitmonchan's a one-shot. Well, not sure still. Critical hit. Good enough. Two down. Hitmonlee is similar-ish stats, so maybe it'll let us know whether we were close. Another critical hit! Okay, thanks. No information. We level up in the middle of battle, so setting up Harden wouldn't have helped us anyway. We knock out Onyx, and I don't think we'll one-shot Machamp. We don't, but no submission. We have pretty high defense, so I don't think it would have mattered. Regardless, we've gone from never making it past Slowbro to making it to Agatha, who I actually think will be a complete joke. We should outspeed her at this level, and Earthquake should one-shot all her Pokemon easily. The only issue is Golbat, maybe we have the 10% miss and get confused, but I think we're going to make it to Lance. All right, do we outspeed? Yeah, we do. That's one down, and now this is the moment of truth. We hit. I don't think there's anything that can stop us. Obviously going to outspeed and one-shot Haunter. Same thing with Arbok. We outspeed Gengar number two as well. That's the less scary Gengar since it can't put us to sleep. Okay. We've made it all the way to Lance. 
And that's probably as far as we're going to make it. That's why I haven't been getting too excited. Because his first Pokemon is Gyarados. It knows Hydro Pump. So there is an 80% chance that our run is over. Unless we one-shot. And I don't know we do. Can't set up badge boosts. Either Rock Slide one-shots Gyarados. Or this entire run, which don't forget, started off with some insane luck. It's all for nothing. Hopefully we get the one-shot, but... I don't know, man. Alright, we outspeed, we hit. No, didn't think so. <laughs> no way. Okay. Alright, no way. Oh, wow. Um, did we just make it to the champion? I don't think there's anything else that can really do much to Onyx. We also just leveled up so I can use badge boosts. First things first, how much does Earthquake do without any badge boosts? You know what, that's pretty decent, and it put it within healing range. I'm okay with that. Now, I could set up Harden, but let's try and change it up. Let's mimic Agility to get Badge Boost from Agility. Plus, in reality, we do need to outspeed Aerodactyl. Unfortunately, it goes for Dragon Rage, which is fine as long as it stops, which it's not. Alright, I have to attack. So we got all three Agilities up. We're gonna go for Earthquake and knock out Dragonair number one. Unsurprisingly, we're gonna knock out Dragonair number two. And I'm pretty sure we one-shot Aerodactyl. Come on! Alright, and I think that's game? As long as we hit, we win, we miss. But so did Dragonite, so that's all good. Alright, take two, we hit. Oh, we didn't knock it out. That's alright. Hyper Potion, we get a do-over. Alright, trying to knock out Dragonite with Rock Slide, take three. Still doesn't knock it out, thought it might be a range. Barrier is fine. Just don't miss, of course you miss. Slam's okay, it's only doing 9. Critical at Hyper Beam may have been a little scarier. Please just hit. Thank goodness. Alright, that was a little scarier than I'd like. But, in the end, with some pretty crazy luck, 20% chance that Hydro Bump misses, we've made it to the champion. Much sooner than I thought we would. But I do have some bad news. In no way did I expect to make it this far. So I used all my rare candies, meaning I'm almost definitely going to level up in the middle of this battle, which probably means I'm going to lose. But we don't know that. There are possibilities where I don't lose. And I'd like to pretend those possibilities are more possible than the possibilities where I do lose. That was maybe the most meaningless sentence I've ever said in my whole life. Let's just show the battle. Since I know I'm going to level up in the middle of the battle, I'm only going to set up two Hardens. Pidgeot can't do anything against Onix, especially once I boost my defense. So after two Hardens, it mirror moves Harden. I go for Rock Slide, and it does survive. Not really a big deal. We can easily knock it out with another Rock Slide, one down. Two badge boosts should be enough to knock out Alakazam. It is. Very good. Two down. If only we leveled up now instead of after Rhydon, I could have set up four badge boosts against Rhydon. Instead, I just have to kind of knock it out and then hope for either a critical hit or another 20% Hydro Pump miss. As I just said, there's the level up. Here's Gyarados at the worst possible time. I don't think we do enough to knock it out. Oh, no. Very close. But it hits with Hydro Pump and we lose. To be fair, one of the luckiest Elite Four runs I've had in a very long time. But it still sucks we weren't able to clutch it out. Between just missing the knockout on Gyarados and the Hydro Pump hitting, we were oh so close because I could have set up against our Canine and we probably would have one-shot Venusaur. And that would have been a really sick run. Instead, I have to battle some more trainers and level up Onyx just a little bit more, plus save a rare candy so I don't level up in the middle of the champion battle. All right, so I'm going to use three of my rare candies, which is going to bring my level to level 72. Only a couple levels higher than last time, but there aren't many more trainers for me to actually defeat, so I really need this to work. Only one way to find out if it will. I'm curious how much damage Rock Slide does, it actually knocks it out. Remember, we went from not coming close to knocking out Dugong to knocking it out without Harden. 
And even though it's due to the badge boost glitch, it does actually narratively make sense that Harden boosts rock type moves. I mean, a harder rock hits harder, right? I think that makes sense. Obviously, we're not going to one shot Cloyster unless we get a critical hit, then we will. We may have just made it past Laurelie. Not sure how much Earthquake will do to Slowbro. Half's okay, but withdraw. It's going to be a 3 KO. Please withdraw again. Yes. Okay, we make it to Jinx at full HP. And we hit with Rock Slide, so we've made it to Lapras with full HP. Not that it matters. Both Hydro Bump or Blizzard would be a one-shot, I think. The question is, will Rock Slide? No. But it heals. All right, we... No way. Oh, come... Yes! Okay, good enough. So, still a little bit of luck here. Critical hit against Cloyster. Healing range for Lapras. Don't forget, though, no Harden. If I use two of them, I think we one-shot Lapras, but maybe we'll never have to do this battle again. That would be pretty nice, and speaking of which, we can absolutely speed through the next two battles. I mean, aside from Machamp getting a critical hit submission, which the chance of that is so, so low, is a 25% chance it even selects submission, and then an 80% chance submission hits. I mean, between it selecting submission, submission actually hitting, and then getting that critical hit, it's like 2% or something. So it's not a realistic concern, and Bruno is pretty easy to make it past. I mean, so is Agatha. Even if we get the 1 in 10 chance that Rock Slide misses, it's not like Golbat can do very much to me. And if I hit myself in Confusion a bunch of times against Golbat, it's not that big a deal. If that were to happen, I could literally just stall by using either Earthquake or Mimic. So, not really a big deal. And it's so weird because Agatha is sometimes this impossible obstacle where we're stuck and it takes us forever just to get to Lance. And in this run, she might be, in fact, I think she is, the easiest member of the Elite Four. But we can't really celebrate all that much because Lance, I don't know if I can make it past. It's going to be very, very close. Hydro Pump is so powerful, I don't think there's a chance. Even if I set up Harden, it doesn't one-shot. So I need to one-shot with Rock Slide, hope for a miss, or I lose. Let's see what happens. All right, we're going for Rock Slide. We hit. So, so close. It heals. So we have another opportunity. Second try. Again, it's not a range and it hits. I mean, looking at the positives, we don't have to level up all that much more in order to beat Gyarados. But I think we are still going to have to level up just a little bit more. There's a few trainers east of Fuchsia I haven't battled yet. So I'm at level 73. Gonna set up a Harden. It goes for Aurora Beam. We one-shot Dugong. And we don't one-shot Cloyster. But we survive Aurora Beam. Unfortunately, it lowers my attack. And Slowbro knocks me out. So Laurelie is doable. We just need better than awful luck. Alright, take two. So, we're gonna set up Harden. It goes for Aurora Beam. No attack drop. I'm gonna set up a second Harden. And I do survive. Maybe I'll be able to one-shot Cloyster? I don't. Okay, that won't work. Even at level 73, Laura Lee is definitely not free. I'm going to do what I did the first time and just use Rock Slide without setting up any Hardens. And we still one-shot Dugong. Against Cloyster, we still don't one-shot and Clamp misses. I think we have it. I'm going to use Earthquake against Slowbro. Oh, we got a crit. No, it just survives. No, it uses Water Gun. And yeah, if you thought there was a chance I could survive a Hydro Pump, that's how much Water Gun just did. So, it's actually a good thing we didn't set up Harden. We wouldn't have enough HP. Alright, got a one-shot Jinx and Lapras. So, we hit. We obviously knock out Jinx. It all comes down to this. Please, Rock Slide, knock out Lapras. No, <laughs> no. Alright. To be fair, we've gotten some pretty insane luck versus Laura Lee. So, it was about time for that to balance out a little bit. I really don't want to have to level up anymore. One more time. Gonna set up Harden. Aurora Beam. No attack drop. Are you kidding me? Alright, one more. That one didn't count. Let's go. So, I'm gonna set up Harden. It goes for Aurora Beam. No! That one also didn't count. One more. One more. No more using Harden. Just go for Rock Slide. Knock out Dugong. One down. 
All right, crit would be nice. We don't get it. Aurora Beam, that's fine. We knock out Cloyster. We're gonna need to set up Harden to knock out Lapras. Of course it went for Water Gun. All right, this one does count. I survive. Let's go. All right, let's use Earthquake. It does about half. Withdraw is good. It's gonna be a 3 KO. Please use another Withdraw or get knocked out. That works too. That works really well. Okay, now we just have to hit. We do. And please one-shot Lapras, please. I really don't want to have to level up even more than this. Come on. No. Oh, well, that works. I mean, part of the strategy is putting Lapras in healing range if we don't knock it out. But yeah, I would prefer to one-shot. I don't know what the percent chance Laurely heals the Lapras is, but that's a question we can ask if we lose. And at this point, there's really one Pokemon that seems to be the final gatekeeper to the champion, Gyarados. If we get either good luck or I've leveled up enough, we make it to the champion, or at least we should. If we can't knock it out with a single rock slide, I might just have to battle Laura Lee over and over again to gain more experience points at this time. It's honestly most of the time faster to just find weaker trainers since all their Pokemon are 1 KOs, while Laura Lee's Pokemon aren't, and I can lose at any point, and it just takes a long time. Speaking of taking a long time, it's taken us a long time to get back to Lance. And this entire battle will be decided on the very first turn. Come on, Onyx, I believe in you. First things first, we have to hit, we do? Yes! Okay, guys, I think we won. I think that's it. It's over. We haven't just beaten Lance. I think we beat the champion too because I have a rare candy. Now against Dragonair, I was trying to think about my experience points and when I'm going to level up. And even though I use Harden, I kind of realize after that, I'm going to level up after this Dragonair. So I'm going to use Mimic and Mimic Agility. So I definitely will at least outspeed everything. After we knock out Dragonair, you see I was right. We do level up. And honestly, I don't think we need to set up any more badge boosts. We should be fine against the rest of these Pokemon. All right. We knock out Aerodactyl in one hit. Perfect. Dragonite likely won't be, but it can't do very much to me. Unless we get a crit. Let's go. All right. I made a big claim that I wasn't worried about the champion that we had won because I have the rare candy. If I'm wrong, at least it'll be pretty funny and I can play that music you guys all really like when I lose. But... I don't think I am wrong. Let's prove it. So against Pidgeot, we're going to set up all six Harden. It can't do anything to me. Wing Attack's doing three HP. Sky Attack, the most powerful flying attack in the game, doing about seven. We have no issues setting up all our badge boosts. And now I think we sweep. Rock Slide, we knock out Pidgeot. Doesn't even matter if we get a crit against Alakazam. It will still one shot. We didn't even get one. Two down. Same with Rhydon. Doesn't even matter if we get a crit, which we don't. Three down. Here's the moment of truth. Do not miss with Rock Slide. Yes, we don't miss. We won, guys. We won. As long as Venusaur doesn't tank an Earthquake, which it shouldn't, right? All right. Before that, here's our canine. Easily outspeed. One shot. Super effective. Come on. Knock it out. Knock it out. Yes! There we go! That was right! It was over! The only thing in our way was Lance's Gyarados, and we were able to beat the champion on our second try. Not bad at all. Or was it? Because here's the thing. Because Laura Lee was just so difficult for me to defeat, I leveled up a ton just to get past her, and by that point, Agatha, who may have outsped me earlier, was a complete joke. In other runs, it's a later Elite Four member who's problematic, so we get a lot of different attempts. Looking at our tier list, which is almost one third of the way done, Onyx is level 74 and 7 hour 24 minute time actually aren't that great. And there are two tiers it could really go in, the Oddish Geodude tier or the Ponyta Charmander tier. I think it fits in better with the Pony to Charmander tier, and a big reason there are two tiers is because of Brock. While he 100% is part of the game and should be counted as such, 
he disproportionately punishes Pokemon who don't get special moves or non-normal moves early on. And so I take that into a little bit of account, which results in Onyx being ranked 34th overall, which puts it, a fully evolved Pokemon essentially in this game, below several first form Pokemon. How long will Onyx remain as the worst fully evolved Pokemon? Only way to find out is to sub, hit that notification bell, because we got plenty more videos where this one came from. Thank you guys for watching, see you soon.